Welcome to reading, power up, covers, playing, watching, and reading. And we've got to the book section. What's up? My name is Maud Garrett, joined by Trisha Hirschberger. Because it's a guestless week, we are going to be talking about what we have recently been reading. But to kick it off, Amy Cassandra Martinez is coming in with some reading news. What's popping on the pages? <gasps> oh, I like that. It's the experience. It's the experience. What's yeah. going on here? So, um, as the prospect of The Expanse running to a sixth season looms, the book jumps 30 years into the future for its next installment. So the issue here is what's gonna happen with the show. They've been pretty, mostly loyal to the novels um, by James S.A. Corey, set in the 24th century. So yeah, uh, they the showrunners did say that they might change the time jump to only 10 years mm. but i want to hear your thoughts like how important is it to you to stay super super true to the novels if that does mean a 30 year jump like realistically speaking that's not necessarily doable for a show financially so what are your thoughts we've seen um what's happened when the show has to it has like sort of superseded the books uh a game of thrones where someone who thinks that they know the property has to kind of forge their own path and so far that has not been successful um the show did start deteriorating once they had, didn't have the actual source material uh, I understand why sometimes um, they have to make some changes, obviously the character bloat or they need to streamline it and pick and choose, maybe fuse a few things together. Um, but then, uh, yeah, other times like, uh, guys, True Blood, the books were a lot better than the show. And I think the first three seasons were in line with what the books were doing. And there's about seven or eight books in total. And there were about seven seasons in total. When they started going off on a tangent, you're like, what the hell is happening? So I like to think, um, pick and choose from the source material as much as possible instead of just going, I think I know the world, and going, Whoosh. Yeah, Whoosh. I, I would agree with that. I haven't read the Expanse books. I love the series, um, but I have not read the books. I hear they're awesome. Um, but uh, I do understand when changes need to be made for practicality's sake. Like, uh, speaking of Game of Thrones in particular, that they had to age up all the kids, all the Stark kids from what they originally were in the books because there are a lot of really bad, horrible things that happen to those children. And there's a lot of sexual things that happen with those children. And I understand why for practical reasons you would not want to cast them at the age they're written in the books. You want to age them up a little. So for similar maybe-ish reasons that you can't necessarily age your actors 30 years in a time jump, maybe making it only 10 years or something like that might be a practical thing that you have to do for the purposes of the show but I agree with Maude as long as you stay true to the source material and to the world as it exists then I think I think you're good um, I don't know that a show needs to stay right on the rails with the source material because then it's not offering anything new or adding any value to the people who've already read it so mm -hmm. add your value in the way that your medium lets you do that best for sure um, but I understand if they need to change the time jump thing. That being said, I'm not precious about the books because I have not read them. I might feel differently I if I read all the books. Yeah, I haven't read them. And I was actually just thinking of a case where even when they do stick to the source material, it's not a guaranteed thing. The Divergent series was based on the books and they never made the last one because no one watched the third one. Oh. Was there a third one or was it the second one? That series just died. Yeah, huh. I don't. I remember watching the first. Actually, I think I might have read those books. Huh. I get confused. I read the Hunger Games and the Divergent series like back to back. So yeah. they're very they're young adult similar. literature, future dystopian society. Mm. I'm just a normal girl, but get the hot guy that everybody likes. I mean, they're, they're, yeah. there's a lot of similarities there. And Jennifer Lawrence and if your drunk looks like Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah, that's too similar as well. Yeah. The casting one. You know. All right. Well, Amy, thank you so much for the news. We will see you back in just a little bit for Bombs Away Q&A. All right. So let's go ahead and get into what we've been reading. 
Oh, yeah. Lovecraft Country. This is the book of the month for Nerdist's Book Club. Uh, I've been reading it and then watching the show on HBO, which has been amazing. They, speaking of exactly that conversation, um, have done a really, really interesting job of picking and choosing and changing very big things and character arcs in the show. Um, but they like the way that they are writing it, it's like segmented. So book, not book one or book two, but like, like, yeah, like standalone episodes almost. So like this will happen and then the same characters, but in a very different scenario or a different scene or whatever. Um, but what's super interesting about Lovecraft Country, it's about sort of HP Lovecraft's world in Jim Crow America. And as an Australian, I didn't know what Jim Crow America was. We just call it, oh, that racist chunk of time that you guys still had and sometimes, you know, haven't completely shed the skin of. Um, but I thought Jim Crow was a dude. Turns out it's a set of laws. Um, but Matt Ruff, the author, is a white guy. And so it's like, how interesting. He didn't write the book necessarily because he wanted to write the book. He wrote a TV pitch and then it got turned away. And so he ended up fleshing it out through the book. And then uh, because of the book, it got picked up by Jordan Peele and J.J. Abrams, who are the uh, executive mm -hmm. producers, and showrunner Misha Green, who is a black woman, who is like, we kind of love this story. Let us tell the story that you yeah. want to share. And so, yeah, they've kind of, like, made some really great changes in that perspective. Now, there's but, only two uh, episodes out right now, right? Yeah, two, okay. yeah, at this stage. I think they come out Monday night, Sunday nights. Mm, okay. So, yeah, so if you're watching this one, uh, VOD, the third one's come out. Um, uh, but I've been, I've been really enjoying learning because this isn't sort of my history. This isn't uh, something that I have been taught or taught to ignore. This is something that um, I, uh, yeah, I'm kind of learning about, you know, in a, in a way that is super palatable because it's combining sort of like monsters and sci-fi <laughs> as well. So it's like cool because uh, H.P. Lovecraft was a massive racist. So I really also love that, you know, the work that he put out there, instead of tarnishing it, it's reowning it. You know, it's, it's this re-ownership that I really appreciate. Yeah. What have you been reading? This looks fun. Um, so Santa Monica Studios sent me this book. B is for boy, the God of War children's novel, which is hilarious because God of War is rated M for mature. Uh, it's not really for kids. Um, and what I will say is this book is 100% more for adults than it is for children. Yes, really? it does definitely go through A is for acts and that kind of stuff. But yeah. it gives you all of that beautiful uh, Kratos and Atreus interaction that you get in the game and it, please understand that the use of the word beautiful there is definitely left up to interpretation they don't have the best relationship throughout the game it does get better as you go but still you know it's it's a special yeah. thing and you kind of go on the same journey that they do as you go through the alphabet um so there are moments like i think the one that i tweeted out that's one of my favorites is uh is the letter i um, oh, for I intestine. Is, I, is for, when they I is for it will serve you to stop talking. That's because of in the in the game. Yeah, no, you cannot carry the ashes, boy. Keep walking. That's what it says. Um, let's see. Cool. Where's another really good one? K is for knife. Do not lose it again. This is all you get. They do not grow on mountains. Nor does oh. L, L, nor does L is for Leviathan, commissioned by your mother. I take care of my axe by giving it to this hack and his brother. So you're like going through things that happen in the game. Um, it's very funny. Uh, Q is for quiet boy. This has spiraled quick. Yes, you are a god, but that is no excuse to be a dick. Hold on. <laughs> oh, it's so because... funny. Son it's of God. So funny. He's still a God. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's very out. funny. Highly recommend. Uh, if you do read it to your children, which I do read it to my child, I skip some of the things. I skip over some of the things that are obviously in there for adults. But as a parent, when you have read The Pokey Little Puppy for the 50 millionth time. Yeah. Sometimes you want something like this to shake up your routine. Um, I, I tweeted this out and everyone was like, oh my gosh, I need it. Uh, but there was one person whose take on it was very intense. And uh, I was like, is that really a take people have? So I want to bring this up for discussion. That They were like, 
please parents don't push the things that your interests on your children and like for it was like please don't force them down your children's throat and then there was like a comic of like that's why you have a baby kids. that then there was like a comic of a baby with a Nintendo controller being smushed into their face like an, an original NES controller being smushed into their face and I was like that's a take that is very specifically uh, making its point for sure. But I don't see, and of course it, maybe that's because I am guilty of this, but I don't see me sharing things that I'm passionate about with my child as me forcing things down my child's throat. Like I feel like that's a lot of projection on that yeah, person's sure. behalf. My, my dad was a nerd and he raised me as a nerd and look where I am now. It's the best thing that ever happened to me. That's like, awesome. How, yeah. Well, and conversely, my parents were not nerds and are not nerds at all. And somehow I still turned out loving D&D and video games and building PCs. So it's not like my parents forced anything that they introduced me to on to me. They just introduced me to it. And we get a Zelda. Speaking of Look parents. Look at She naked. She chunky. She naked. <laughs> oh, 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 I'm so... She's doing circles. Uh, yeah, no, no, no. Um, you have kids so that you can call them something nerdy. So you can push your fun things onto them so they are more bearable being in your life. As far as I, you know, like that's what they're for. I was playing video games since I was like five because dad's like, I want to play. Therefore, if I teach you to play it, we can like play together. Yeah, oh, for, man. Sure, for sure. That's so cool. My parents were 100% like, video games? What's that? You don't need that. And then I begged and begged and begged and begged and begged and begged and begged until I got that. What, what, what did your parents like that they could have pushed onto you? Uh, my parents Unsuccessful. were a little like 70s hippie kind of. So they were very into um, the music scene, which I'm not super oh. into the music scene. But they were very into like going camping at music festivals and stuff like that. And my mom was like, you know, super into Billy Joel. And my dad was super into Pink Floyd. And like I, I remember a lot of that as a kid. But definitely not nerdy stuff. Yeah. They were like TV shows that they liked. But they were pretty, pretty normy TV shows. I say mm -hmm. lovingly in the best sense of the word. Um, but yeah, so all, all that just to say that they introduced me to the things that they liked, but I, I never felt like that was forced down my throat. Hmm. Hmm. I just thought yeah, that, that was something... an interesting take because that was the last thing I expected to see when I was like, oh my God, God of War fans that are parents, look at this, with someone being that like. That needs a hug is maybe. what I will say. But they Let's pulled cartoons out about it. So I was like, obviously there's more than one person that thinks this. Mm. Mm-mm. Uh, Amy, bombs away Q and A. Bombs away Q and A. Hello. Yes. So this question is from Patreon, Patreon.com/slash/geekbomb. Mm -hmm. Twitch viewers, get your questions ready. This one's from Mr. Pirate Dancer. What special power would you want to have? Oh, uh, like superpower or? I feel like we've answered this before, and I feel like Maud got mad at me for saying flight. Yeah. Right? <laughs> we've definitely yeah. had this conversation before, and I know I've had this conversation with Anthony Carboni, too, who also got mad at me for saying flight. Um, uh, I, I, think, I think the reasoning was that teleportation is obviously superior, uh, but I'm not in it just for the travel benefits. I'm in it because it would be awesome to fly. I want the experience of flying and teleportation could not give me that. Yeah, no, that feeling of free fall and like, ugh, I would hate it. I would hate it. I would hate it. Well, if you're flying, you would um, have to free fall. You could just be gliding. Oh. <laughs> what would you choose? Teleportation. Teleportation would be great, especially when you deal with LA traffic for years, or you're in the midst of a global pandemic and can't see your family. <gasps> Teleportation. Teleportation. Oh, guys, I want to meet my nephew so oh, bad. Honey, I know. He's so cute. I got the best FaceTime screenshot with my dad and my nephew, and they're so cute. They're I love so it. cute. Anyway, good question. We got one from Twitch. 
I am looking right now. Yeah, I just don't think mind control is evil. I don't think mind control is evil because if it is, Geralt from Witcher has mind control. Um, Jedi mind trick. It's a Jedi power mind control. Like mind control is not freaking evil. It just I mean, diffuses. We've all seen too many kill graves in our time. It depends what you would do with it, but just because you can do it doesn't mean you will do it. Like every human can kill. We have the capacity to do it. We don't. Some don't. Some some do. Some don't. But then I would say killing is in like murder is inherently evil. It is. But you're saying mind control is not inherently evil, but then comparing it to murder. I understand the point you're making. I'm just saying that specific logical parallel doesn't line up necessarily. <laughs> Sorry, I just went back to like college logic class. <laughs> oh, that's fun though. It is fun. Uh, okay, we have another one. Classy librarian, a highlighted comment. What book would you never want to see adapted into a movie or a game? Never. <laughs> I got one. <laughs> Go. I think it may have been a TV show, which is why I'm speaking from experience. The first book I ever read, and mum was like, you're four, you shouldn't be able to read this. Uh, it's called Snuggle Pot and Cuddle Pie. It is very much an Australian novel because they are um, gum leaf, gum leaf nuts, but like little people versions of like mm. gum leaf nuts. And the bad people are Banksia men, like a Banksia plant. Um, I think these plants are both actually in LA because they were an introduced species, but um, they also have like um, pudding in a, a in a tin. Like this should never be brought to life. It is not good looking. It is not aesthetically nice. It is like, you know, like botchlings in Witcher. It's that kind of stuff. So yeah, it doesn't need to be made into anything. You guys can Google. I'll do it for you. Snuggle pot and cuddle pot. There it is. I can't believe I've just said the name of this. Get it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Whoa. Whoa. Wait, enlarge cover. Maud, now it wants to sign me to Goodreads. If you have anything, let me know. If this is such a hard question, I'm just trying to, there you go. Like, Ooh. let's never bring I these. I can see it, but they can't see it yet. See if you can move it closer into frame by your face. There you go. Yep. There it is. Yeah, let's never bring this to life. Okay. Yep. This oh, is such is a hard scary. question because all the things, all the books that I'm thinking of are things that I'm like, it could be done well. What comes to mind for me is books that have been made into movies that haven't been done well. And I'm like, maybe that never should have happened. Um, like, yeah. I would argue for that. And I'm going to get a lot of crap for this. And that's okay. Um, I did not like the movie adaptation for Ready Player One. And I know oh. there's a lot of people who don't like the book. I personally enjoyed the book. Um, and I did not enjoy the movie. But I think that's because inherently the way the book is written, you could never port it to movie form and get all the licenses and everything you would need to do an actual real adaptation of what that book is, how it was written. Um, so maybe oh, it should have never been made into a movie. That being said, lots of people love the movie and lots of people hate the book. So that is just my personal opinion. <laughs> Yeah, Dasmir says, uh, cough, Aragon, cough. Yeah, putting Joss Stone in there and giving Serafina that voice, that kind of didn't work. I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, that's uh, that's Power Up. Yay! That's power up. We did it. We did another <laughs> one. Oh, nice. Thank you so much for watching this one. If you haven't subscribed to Geek Bomb, you can get all the VODs for Power Up. P W R, and if we have a guest, a standalone interview for those you don't want to miss it. If you haven't given uh, Trisha's Twitch a follow or a sub yet, now's the time to do it. We'll read your name after this. Uh, and if you haven't subbed to my Twitch channel, just look up Geek Bomb because I would love to hit five thousand. Yay! Um, so folks, next time I have like the busiest weekend. Next time I will be live. I have a Naked Truth on YouTube tomorrow at nine thirty in the morning. It's going to be a very early Naked Truth because I am hosting a charity event for Alienware all weekend this weekend with Erica Ishii. So if you want to tune into that, I will be hosting it on this channel. I'm sure I'll mention it in Discord and on Twitter as well, but it's on twitch.tv slash Alienware starting at 12 p.m. Pacific time tomorrow. 
and uh, going through until Sunday evening at 8 p.m. So Erica and I will be, we will not be there the whole time. Erica and I will be there for like a good two-hour chunk in the beginning and probably a good solid chunk at the end. Um, but we're raising money for charity, so make sure that you stop by if you can. It's going to be really fun. Um, there will still be a Sunday morning stream, STS, because Sunday morning I am not on the Alienware stream. So there will be a Sunday morning stream. And I think, I'm so very excited, I think I'm finally returning to the world of control for the new DLC. And I'm so excited. That game is so Ooh. good. So don't miss Sunday morning stream. It's going to be awesome. Um, and I saw someone in chat, Curb Stomp in chat, just said, where can I watch Power Down? Mod? That is a perk. Uh, it will be posted uh, for all of $10 and higher if you back Patreon, patreon.com slash geekbomb. Those episodes go up every single Tuesday, but you need to be a backer to get access to those. We post them on the Discord, but it's like a $10 and higher section that has access to it. The bomber backers, right? Isn't that what they're called? Bomber backers. Yeah, yeah. a little teens. I like that. And of course, join the Discord, both the Geek Bomb Discord or the Dragon Riders Discord if you want to get updates for me and all my stuff. That is the absolute best way to know what's going on whenever um, because it's probably the only platform that I'm religiously on every single day. Mm. Um, so make sure you check out the Discords. They're both free and open to join uh, for Geek Bomb and Dragon Riders. And yeah, I will see... I will see you all bright and early for Naked Truth tomorrow. Um, and then, yeah, or when you see Power Down, whenever that goes up. Yeah. Tuesday. Thank you, everybody, for watching, and we will see you soon. Bye.